In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this great family tree with the help of some really easy to learn tool paths and the laser module. For this project, we're gonna use this nice little CNC with the laser attachment that we have right here. One of the great things about our laser module that we have is that we can project the toolpath onto a 3D surface. So we can add it to all kinds of different shapes, which is really unique and interesting. Now, before I got started on this project, I did go ahead and cut some sample images or etch some samples using our laser, but I used MDF and later on, you'll see how that'll come back to haunt me a little bit in our finished project. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a little tidbit or share a little tidbit with you that we are gonna be sending our toolpath directly from my laptop to the CNC using a piece of software that you all had a chance to install when you first installed your Vectric software, which is vTransfer. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much about how to use vTransfer, but there'll be a link below to the documentation for that. But that's how I'm gonna get those toolpaths from here to the CNC. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the initial file that I'm going to give you, the very customizable file, and then we're going to come back out and we're going to cut that on the CNC and then we'll take it from there. Before I started to work out the design for this project, I had to understand where or what areas of my working envelope of my CNC machine I could actually touch with my laser. Now I'm saying that because if this is my example, this is the working area of my uh, CNC bed, I would be zeroing the center of my bit right here, and I'd be able to reach pretty much everywheres in this space. But if I have a look at how our laser is set up, it's mounted to the left-hand side of our router, and it's forward just a little bit. So in order for me to line up the point of that to where the, um, the point of my CNC bit is, I need to apply what we call an offset. And that offset is obviously driven at this corner, but it's reflected in the back corner. So really the only area of this working envelope of my CNC that I can get to with my laser is this area right here. That was important because if I'm gonna do any hybrid CNC work, so uh, maybe etching onto a 3D contour, then I need to make sure that the area that I wanna etch in is actually in this space. Now, I could remove the part off my machine, put it back on again to, to align it properly, but I don't wanna go through all that hassle. So I just wanna make sure that when I'm designing this, I'm thinking through where I want to actually laser things. And this is saved off as a template so that when any, anybody else ever uses the CNC machine, they can just open this file up and start the design and they know exactly where they can get with their laser and some of the design constraints they need to think about. Okay, I've gone ahead and opened up the file that you're going to receive with this free project. And as always, we, we want you to be sure that you go ahead and check the tool paths to make sure they're safe and appropriate for your machine, the material you're using, and the tools you have on hand. Okay, so we'll just click OK. Now, as you can see, I used multiple sheets in this project, mainly because I'm using multi-materials and also I'm stacking things up, so they need to be cut differently. Um, down here on my design sheet, as always, and, and I do this quite often, is my first sheet ends up being a design sheet where I actually take and I lay out my project, um, how I like things to look, where things should be located. Not necessarily my actual uh, vectors for building things, but just an idea of where things should kind of fit. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a smaller CNC, so I needed to make sure that I didn't make objects or parts of my project that were going to be too big to fit on the machine. So if I go over to my layers tab here, you see that I have a layer called router working area. If I turn that on, this is the actual area or the work envelope of my CNC machine where my router can get to. And I can move that around my job and you'll see that all the different parts or all the different layers of my job will fit within that box. So that I'm okay with that. So we can just put that back where it was and we'll rehide that. So what I'm going to use to cut this with, I didn't want to do, well, knowing the limitations of V-Carve that I couldn't do any 3D modeling in it, I thought maybe some 2.5D um, tool paths would be really cool to use. So we're going to use the molding tool path to create the, create the bevels on the edge of the foliage of the tree. So there's going to be some roundy edges on this, the back part of the foliage and then the front part of the foliage on the edge of the trunk. And we're going to use a piece of 3D 
um, a clip art that comes along free with this project of a ribbon. So we can do some 3D machining, some roughing, some finishing. Um, and then we're also going to employ a little bit of um, layering of material. So we're going to have this back bit of foliage pocket inside the tree trunk. On top of that, we're going to glue a layer, another layer on top of this next layer of foliage. And then inside of that, we're going to pocket out areas to put the tags. We're also going to pocket out a spot on the trunk of the tree so the ribbon can fit inside of that. When I was thinking about this design, I had to think how the molding toolpath works. And this is the outside vector that I want to achieve, or the outside border that I want to achieve of the bottom layer of my foliage. In order to use the molding toolpath, I have to have a cross section and a vector. And the vector is the actual um, shape that I want the molding to look like, but it hangs on the outside of the vector. So in this case, if I hung it on the outside of this, then it's just not gonna work, it's gonna be too big. So I need to offset inwards the width of the cross section I'm gonna use for my molding tool path so that I can get these layers looking right as in my design. Let's have a look at the uh, sheet called tree back now, double click on that. Now this is where we're going to start to think again about that molding toolpath. Hopefully this will make sense to you. So this is the outside vector that you saw in the original design. And I offsetted that inwards, the width of this cross section that I'm going to use for my molding toolpath. So if I select that and I press T on my keyboard, you'll see there's the width. Now I didn't need to press T on my keyboard. I could simply look down at the bottom here. And because I have one vector selected, then that's going to be the width of that single vector. So I just took that, offsetted that inwards that distance, the 0.35 an inch, and that will give me all that I need, these two vectors to create a molding toolpath. Um, I copied over the trunk uh, vector and I cropped it off so that I only need this bit here so that I can go ahead and pocket out or profile cut out this piece that I need out of there so I can inset in my trunk where I want it to be. So let's have a look at the toolpath that we have here. So bring up the toolpath tab and we'll pin that down. And let's take a look at our sweep profile or our molding toolpath. So right away, you'll see that it's going to set up my toolpath position. So it's going to put that at the top of my material. I'm going to use a quarter inch bull nose. I'm going to vary my step over down the side of this. So I'm going to get a nice smooth transition along the edge of this. I'm not going to use a large area clearance tool. You're going to want to check that. Um, if you decide to make this any deeper than what I felt was safe for my bull nose end mill to go down, then you're going to want to need to change this to use a larger clearance area tool. So that might be important for you, especially if you modify this design any. Okay, um, I didn't use sharp corners. I used an automatic boundary offset. So essentially, I'm going to overshoot. I'm going to I'm going to overshoot at the top of this, uh, the, the distance that the software feels I should need to go, and then it's also going to cut outwards the same distance. Okay, in my case, I'm okay with this for this particular time, and we're going to go ahead now and calculate that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at both of these things, both the preview the 3D preview and the 2D. So you'll see here that there is that offset that I talked about. So there's the line that I wanted it to stop at, starting in the purple line here. In this area is that contour that I drew. Okay, and then this is the area outside that the offset is gonna happen and the inside that this offset's gonna happen. And you can see that off also in the 3D view where I'm gonna run across the top of my material and running along the bottom of that particular curve that I'm looking at. Let's just go ahead and look down at that and let's preview that visible toolpath and we'll see what we get. And that's exactly what I want. I like that a lot. It's nice and smooth. There is some cusping here, but it's easily sanded out. And that looks really great. Now, one of the things about the molding toolpath and using it for this particular situation that you're gonna to wanna to look at is that Sometimes uh, the result will not be exactly what you want because of where the cross sections are going to line up or how this contour works. So keep that in mind um, just so that I, I want you to know that it's not a rule that the result will actually give you this perfect outside border because it won't. Okay, so just keep that in mind, especially, like I said, in this use case. Okay, so let's close that down. The next thing we're going to look at is the trunk. So the piece that I'm going to actually profile out for my trunk. Pretty easy tool path. I'm cutting down the full depth of my material plus a little bit using an end mill. I'm going to cut inside that line. This is the part I want to point out to you. I did not use an allowance offset. Becky would shoot me. But I didn't do it for a reason because when this part is on the machine, I can't test fit 
my trunk into it. There's no way I can because the uh, there'll be material out here and I won't be able to make sure it fits. So I didn't use this at all in the hopes that it would be tight enough or a little too tight so that I could, could get it in there with maybe just a little bit of persuasion. Um, in the end, uh, because another mistake I made, which was using a different tool by mistake, it actually left me a little bit more of a gap than what I had expected. But overall, it looks perfectly fine, so I'm happy with that. So you're going to want to look at this when you cut this to either add in a little bit of allowance if you want to, so negative allowance to make this pocket a little bit bigger, okay? Or this area a little bit bigger. I ended up using some tabs to hold this in, uh, which was really quite nice. If we calculate that, it's going to tell me that I'm going to cut through my material, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. And there we have it with the tabs. Now, the last thing is the cutout pass. Pretty much the same as what you just saw a second ago, except for I want to point out right here that I've gone ahead and when I've placed my tabs, I actually lined them up with these tabs. If I didn't do that, then what would happen is I'd actually cut this piece out and it would just be free flowing. It would fly around. I didn't want that. So I lined up those tabs perfectly with these tabs. So when we calculate those and we realize, the not the error, but we're all okay with the error because I knew I was going to cut through my material. We'll preview that visible toolpath, and you'll see that in the end, those tabs lined up. It's going to hold in place for me nicely, and that looks like a great bottom layer of our foliage. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the, um, the next sheet, which is going to be the top, or the tree front, we'll call it. Let's just close down our preview over here. Now this sheet is nearly the same as the last one we just saw. We've got the molding toolpath with that offset I talked about. There's our cross section there we're going to use. But we've gone ahead and added in these place markers for where the family tags are going to go. Now I've designed these perfectly so that a 1 8 inch end mill will fit in here really nice and give us a nice shape without any surprises. And then I use that shape to develop these tags up here on the sheet called family tags, which we'll go over in a bit, a bit later. But for right now, let's have a quick look at these tool paths. Now, I've ordered these in the way that I felt was best to cut them, cutting the pockets for the tags first. These are really basic. I'm cutting down a distance, uh, which is an eighth of an inch. I'm using an eighth inch ball nose, or, sorry, an eighth inch end mill, not a ball nose end mill, but an end mill. Um, I'm using a offset tooling, which is totally fine for what I'm doing here. I've got a bit of a pocket allowance. So these are going to be a little bit bigger so that these tags will fit into. And that's the part that I mentioned before when we talked about the trunk. You're going to want to consider that, okay? And we can go ahead and calculate that and we can preview that visible toolpath. And as you can see, I'm cutting this one first. Let's have a look at our uh, molding toolpath. Same as the last one, we're using this drive rail. This cross section, it's going out the width of this cross section here. It's all set up perfectly for me using that same ball nose end mill, the quarter inch, using the boundary offset so I can calculate that. And what's kind of nice about this, when we preview it, you'll see that we're going to start to cut away some of the base where this uh, tag is going to fit. That's going to make it so the tag looks like it's kind of sitting inside the foliage of the tree because there'll be a gap back there, which I think is going to look kind of neat in the end. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the last toolpath, which will be our cutout toolpath. Nothing special here, the same as before. We're going down the thickness of our material, plus a little bit, using that end mill, cutting on the outside of our line, adding in some tabs. We can calculate that, press OK, and then we can go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. And that's what we're going to end up with. I think that's exactly what I was hoping for. Great, let's close this down. Let's go back to our 2D view again, and let's look, take a look at our next sheet, which is the trunk. Okay, so the trunk is kind of neat. Didn't want it to be a consistently rounded edge all the way around it because I thought that would look a little bit funny in, in two spots. One where the actual foliage inter intersects with the trunk. It kind of needed to be flat. And then along the bottom, I didn't want it to round over at the bottom. I want it to be kind of like roundy, 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 and then kind of fade out a bit. So to do that, I'm going to use this vector right here. And you'll see that this vector with this cross section for the molding toolpath will make it nice and round all the way through here. And then it, when I actually run my cutout toolpath, it's going to cut off part of the molding toolpath and just to leave behind this little bit here that I want to have left. Again, may not make so much sense right now, but in a second it should. These vectors here in the center are for the um, pocketing out for the actual ribbon, which I haven't showed you yet. So let's take a little quick sneak peek at that. Here's the ribbon that we have. So the middle section of this needs to kind of go over 
the center of our trunk. And these corners of the ribbon here need to sit on or inside of the trunk itself or inside the roots itself. So I need to pocket out some of those areas. All I did was created a, a vector outline from this um, ribbon, copied it to this sheet, made sure it lined up perfectly where I wanted it to be, cropped out the bits I didn't want, added a little bit of extra vector to it so that my tool would go outside of those spaces and not leave little weird cusps there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It worked out really well. So let's take a look at the tooling for this. So we're going to pin that down. Let's go ahead and have a look at this first tool path. Because our material is uh, for our trunk is slightly thicker than the material for the foliage, I had to go ahead and pocket down uh, 0 0.04 of an inch to make it the right thickness. It, this is all this toolpath is for. You may or may not need to run this one, but I did in the end. So let's preview that visible toolpath. That's just going to go ahead and just remove a bunch of material there for me. Uh, that's pretty good right there. That looks great. So let's close that down. The next toolpath we're going to run, we may as well just tile our views here to make things a little bit easier to see. Um, is going to be the uh, pocket for the ribbon. So that's again, we're just going to start at that 0 0.04 of a depth because we've, we've removed that material. With the quarter, we're going to go down a quarter inch. We're going to use that end mill, offset tooling, uh, and we've added a little bit of a pocket allowance. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than what it should be. So our ribbon should fit in there nicely. Then we'll calculate that and we can preview that visible tool path. That looks perfect. And you'll see that I changed my material color so it reflects kind of the material that I'm going to use to cut out the trunk with. We're going to use a sweep profile. Here we go, We're using those two vectors. Now, they're not a continuously closed vector, but they're two individual broken vectors that fall along the outside edge of that trunk where I want it to be. Same settings as before, except for I needed to make sure that I did use that gap at the top because I've dropped that material down 0.04 of an inch. Okay, we can go ahead and calculate that and we'll preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see what we get in the end. It's exactly what I want. And then we're gonna do a cutout toolpath. So these bits up here that I don't want anymore, when I run this cutout toolpath, you'll see what happens. So we're gonna cut down all the way through our material, plus a little bit using a quarter inch end mill outside. We added in some tabs, again, for safety. And we'll take a look at that and see what we get. And you'll see the way that the we get this little roundy bit here and it goes up and it just kind of peeks out the top here. And this is the part that marries into the tree. And it looks like it's kind of a nice little shape that we have, which I think looks really great. So that's that. Let's close that down. I'm really happy with that. Let's go ahead and maximize this. And we're going to have a look at the ribbon next now. Okay, let's tile our views. And that way we can see the ribbon on the bottom. And we can zoom into our 2D view here and see the uh, 2D vectors we have on the top. Now, for starters, um, this ribbon I built in Aspire. And uh, if you want to know how to build your own ribbons, there's a really great tutorial in your tutorial browser on how to do that. So go ahead and have a peek at that. Uh, it'll explain a method of creating ribbons. There's several different methods, but definitely it is a good method to get you started. Okay, so this uh, piece of kilp art comes free with this project. And you'll see that I have an outline vector created and we have some text on the top that we're gonna use later for actually doing our laser engraving. So it's there just as a placeholder. We have three different tool paths over here. Um, now, what's important about this particular toolpath is it had to fit with inside the working envelope, obviously, of our CNC machine, but also the area in the middle that I want to laser, I had to be able to reach with my laser. So if we go back to our layers again and we turn on the router working area, you'll see that obviously it fits inside of that. And then we turn on my laser working area, you'll see that I can get to all of this area because it fits with inside this space here. So that was really handy to have on hand when I was working out, uh, making sure that this could all really happen. To be fair, I did it originally the first time around and this ribbon was way too big and I couldn't get the name on there because I couldn't reach it. So I had to go back and correct that. So uh, lesson learned there. Three very basic tool paths for 3D machining. We need a quick roughing tool path using a large quarter inch end mill or a large end mill. We're gonna go ahead and use a selected vector. We're gonna overshoot that vector on the outside by a distance. We're gonna add, leave some material behind so that we have something for the finishing tool path to come back and get. We're gonna use Z-level roughing and we're gonna go ahead and calculate that and then we can preview that tool path.
Okay, for the next toolpath, we're going to go ahead and look at the finishing. Now, with these particular toolpaths, and of course, any toolpath you generate in our software, if you're not happy with the result in the 3D preview, now is the time to go back and fix it, okay? But that one looked good to me. We're going to use the, um, the quarter-inch ball nose that we've been using for the molding toolpaths. We're going to go ahead and use that same selected vector. We've got a boundary offset, so we're going to cut outside of this a little bit. Uh, we're going to use a, an offset, a strategy to cut this with. So we're going to start in the middle and work our way out. And we can go ahead and calculate that. And then we can preview that visible toolpath. Okay, I'm really happy with the way that looks. So let's now have a look at our cutout toolpath. Now, as always, we're gonna cut through our material. So when we calculate this, we're gonna get this error, but that's okay. As you see, we're gonna cut through our material, like I said, just a little bit. We're gonna cut outside that line with that quarter inch end mill. We're gonna add tabs, so everything's okay there. Okay, now that we have all of those tool paths all created, we can go ahead now and start cutting our project on our CNC machine. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and rechecked my tool paths to make sure they're gonna be okay for this machine, I've got my two bits, my end mill that I'm gonna use for all the pockets and the cutouts, and my ball nose end mill for all of the uh, molding tool paths. So I'll put those aside for right now. And now all the pieces of material I've got already cut and ready to go, I'm gonna double-sided tape these down to the, the, the waste board of the machine. Hopefully they won't move. If they do, I'll have to rethink that, but that should be okay for these particular jobs. So once I get all these parts cut, We'll reconvene and we'll talk a little bit about the laser toolpaths. Okay, I know I said I was only going to use those two bits, but this is the 1 8 inch end mill that we're going to use to actually cut the pockets for the family tags. I want nice tight corners. Um, yeah, so this will do the trick. So we've done the, the roughing, the finishing, and the cutout pass for the ribbon. It all looks great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into the software and sort out the laser stuff. We can't remove this off the machine quite yet because we're actually gonna need it located where it is so we can laser right on the ribbon. So let's go take care of that now. Okay, before we get too far into the uh, laser tool pass for this job, let's take a second and talk about the laser module that's available for your Vectric software. So if you go to our website, uh, www.vectric.com, you can look under products and you can see the laser module. And here it outlines all the information about the laser module. There's some free uh, projects you can download if you'd like to, and also, also the pricing is listed here at 49 US dollars or 39 pounds. It's a great addition to your software. Software. Um, 
One thing I'd want to point out here is that if you're unsure about using this with your particular laser, that you can go ahead and under the free trial menu, you can go down to the laser module and you can download our free trial version of VCarve Pro. And then you can go ahead and turn on the laser module and use one of our free projects. So you can go ahead and test your laser to make sure that everything is going to work okay. The caveat to this is that you need to use one of our free projects and that V transfer will not work um, in the trial version of your software okay so just keep those things in mind but again if you want to try it there's a trial version if you want to buy it you can go ahead and pop over to our website and purchase it for the price in your currency as you can see, we already have the laser module installed because we have the two new tool path strategies here in our uh, tool path operations. We have the laser cut and fill and the laser pitcher tool paths. So the idea of the uh, leaving the, the reason why I want to leave the ribbon behind is we want to be able to actually etch this family name, well, not this text, but a variation of it onto the top of this ribbon. So first of all, we need to make sure that we have the right text in here. So this text is still a text element. I only went ahead and uh, bent it into place using the spacing and curve operation here. So it's still a text element. So if I go into my text editor, I can go ahead and change that text really easily. So let's get rid of the name and put my in the front. So it's my family. I like all the settings that are here. So that's all good. Let's close that down. That's updated here. Now let's have a look at the uh, the first toolpath strategy here for under our laser stuff, which is the laser cut and fill. Now, like all of our tool paths um, in the software, you'll need to select a tool to use it. So the first thing up here is to select an actual laser that we want to use. So if we go into our selection box here, up will pop our tool database. Now I have the option of either importing in a standard laser tool database into my database of tools, or I can set up my own. In my case, we only have a six watt laser here, so I decided to go ahead and set up my own two tools for this. So we have a, uh, a tool set up for photo, for if I'm actually going to etch a photo. And then we have uh, some set tool settings here for the cut and fill. So let's have a just first, let's look at the photo one. These are all really easy to set up. It's obviously a laser cutter. Our units are in inches. You can choose what you'd like. It's a six watt laser. The kerf came from the manufacturer. So I just typed that in there. Because this is going to be our standard setup for this tool, I only want it always to do one pass unless I tell it different. So it's set to one. The power for a photo, for using this as a photo, is going to be 15%. It's quite a strong laser. Any Much more than that, it's going to get really dark. Um, so I don't want to turn that up too much more than that. That obviously depends on things. But for right now, it's a good starting place millimeters per second. The move speed of the head of the laser is going to be 45 millimeters per second. Now, don't forget that if I go ahead and decrease the or increase the power by double and keep the same move speed, then it's going to end up getting twice as dark because the laser is going to hang around longer in that space. So just keep that in mind as you're playing around with these. Um, the maximum burn rate. Now, this one is an interesting number because it doesn't actually affect your laser any. We use this number to give you a realistic preview of the etching in your 3D preview when you're doing your uh, previewing your tool paths to make sure everything looks okay. So this number is based on a few tests that I ran to try and match up the material uh, or what I see in the software with what actually happens on the material once I etch it. And so this seemed to be a pretty good number. Of course, it's going to change depending on the material and whether or not we can match the material in the software with the real life material. That So you're going to need to play around with this a little bit to get it right. But it's nice to have it there. And in this case, the tool number is set to 1. Um, and if I want to change that, it should be, actually be at 0. So let's change that to 0 and hit apply, and that's great. Then we have the other laser, the other laser uh, tool here, and this is the cut and fill. It's pretty much all the same, except for the information here at the bottom. Um, when I'm doing um, etching of like outlines or text, I'm gonna ask it to turn the laser up to full power. Again, millimeters per second, move speed is 45. And the maximum burn rate that I want to be able to preview is 75 millimeters per second which seems pretty good in the end. Um, and yeah, so and the tool number is zero as well. So you can see that I changed those numbers depending on what I wanted to see or, or, or the actual use of the laser tool. So we're gonna go ahead now with the text, I'm gonna use the cut and fill option. So we're gonna select that. 
And like any other traditional tool path, I can go ahead and temporarily edit the tool. And this is where I could go in and change my number of passes or adjust my power if I want to just slightly. I can do all that right here. But for now, we're going to leave everything the way it is. There are some quick um, ways of changing the, the obvious things that you might want to change uh, on the fly really easily without going into your edit options. You can change your power, your move speed, and your pass number. We can also tell the, um, the laser whether you want to follow um, outside the line or inside the line, or cut on the line, or hatch fill the line. Um, in my case, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the hatch fill. We'll look at these a little bit later in another tool path we're going to create, because I want to fill in this space. The step over is much like a traditional step over with a traditional CNC tool. This is the space between the lines, the laser lines that we're going to create. We're not going to put any hatch angle in there, but we could if we wanted to. And then we're going to just for a second look at what's here. We can choose how the strategy is going to fill these areas. We can fill it all together, so we can do the whole thing at one time. We can fill it regionally, so that's more or less putting a bounding box around obvious things and filling those in regionally. Or we can fit regionally within a vector, so we can actually go ahead and etch the M first, the Y, the F, the A, the M, and so on down the road. So in my case, um, and it depends on how, you know, your own preference, I guess, in the end. I'm going to go with fit regionally, um, but in the end, a fit regionally within vectors might look a little cooler as it's cutting along. But hey, that's okay. I'm going to go with this for now. Uh, I'm going to use a crosshatch. I want to outline around that font. That kind of cleans up, makes it look really nice. In this case, I'm not going to project it to... Um, our 3D model, and I'm just going to go ahead and calculate that. We're going to skip this section right here for a second. We're going to calculate that, and we can have a look at that. Now, it looks really good. You can see how it's filling those in with sort of a bounding box around it. It looks really good. The red lines are the, the, the traveling of the laser around. I'm not wasting too much time with this one. I think it looks really great. If I turn it up on its edge, you'll see that it's actually floating above the ribbon on the surface of my material block. Now, this is where the real power of the hybrid laser um, CNC setup is, is that I can actually harness the power of my um, Z travel on my machine so I can keep the focal length the same across the surface of a relief, hence not burning uh, things that are really close or things that are farther away, making them lighter. I can keep it the burn consistent across the surface of this um, relief model. To do that, it's really simple. I just need to project that onto my 3D model. Now, before we actually go ahead and look at that, I want to take a look at this down here at the bottom. Because this machine, if I choose the proper post processor for it, I can actually output it directly to my CNC using V transfer. Um, I could make an adjustment and then just fire it, look at it in my, in my 3D view, make sure it looks okay, and then I could send it right off to my machine and burn it on the fly. It's very helpful, V-Transfer, if your machine happens to have a Gerbil controller, then it works really, really well, something you might want to explore. Another part of this is that what I can do is when I hit hold down the control key, and this is the same for any toolpath um, form in our software, and I hit calculate, notice what happens. Typically, this would strategy or the, the dialog would close down and we'd be bumped right into the 3D preview. Well, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. You can just hold down the control key and instantly see the change that you've made. And that's what I really want. You can see how the um, the toolpath is bending across the top of the face of that ribbon because we're adjusting the Z uh, height to make sure that we keep the focal length the same all the way across that surface. And that's going to look really good in the end. Now I can just go ahead and output this directly to my machine if I want to. If I uncheck that, then I can save off the toolpath and put it on a USB key if I want to. And then off I go. So let's just close this down right now and let's preview that on the actual um, preview of all of our toolpaths. So we're going to preview that visible toolpath. And you'll see what happens. That's what that's going to look like when we save it off and run it on that ribbon. And that should line up perfectly, assuming that we use the proper offset. Okay, so our next set of laser toolpaths are going to be created on a different sheet. So if we go ahead and take a look at our project up here, we can go ahead and take a look at this family tags uh, sheet. So let's double click on that. We may as well maximize our view. We'll close down our uh, toolpath dialog for right now. We don't need that right off the bat anyway. So I've already set up this sort of template for you. So what you have here is some outlines. And this is a, a an outline of the oval with a flat bottom. So it's it's an actual um, vector that, that's connected at the ends. And we also have this bit at the bottom here where we can 
house the name. And then we have this outside vector that we're going to use as a cutout profile so that we can cut out these tags. Now, before we go ahead and do that, we need to make some edits here. First of all, let's take a look at our tool paths just to kind of get a sense of what's going on here. So I've set you up with three different tool paths. You've got a cutout tool path. You get the details, which are these lines here. And then you have the names. And because these are still um, text components, then um, text elements, excuse me, then we can go ahead and edit these and we can just recalculate the tool path and the names will automatically uh, you, or the the new vectors for the names will actually be used in the tool path to create the proper tooling for that, um, for the name chain, sorry. So let's go ahead and first of all, let's just resort these out. The last thing I want to do is a cutout pass. Now I'm saying that, and that's the way I did it, but you may actually want to do your cutout pass first because there isn't any pressure put on the material when you're lasering it, then actually you could do the cutout pass first. You could hoover it all off or vacuum it all off, clean it all up, and then go back and do your burning, which in hindsight may be a better way to do it. That way you're not getting dust stuck inside of the actual etchings. Um, so you might want to think about that, but for now I'm going to do it as you're going to see it uh, in the video at the end here. So we're going to run the cutout pass last. Now we don't have any family pictures in here right now because we do want to explore the idea of the laser picture toolpath. So we're gonna import in a bitmap and I have a folder set up of a fictional family. Um, there's some pictures that I found online that seem to look like they would make a nice family. We've got uh, two sets of grandparents. We've got a mom and a dad and a little child. So let's start off with one of these. I'm going to show you how to process one of these. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about um, some of the pros and cons of each one of these images. So first of all, we're going to bring in this set of grandparents. We'll open that up. And then we're going to center this behind one of these ovals. Now, from experience, you want to try and fill out that oval as much as you can so it looks, you know, that they're not jammed in there, but certainly we're not wasting any too much space around it. So we'll get lots of detail in their faces. Um, I think probably that, that's pretty decent there. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to crop it to the actual inside circle. So to do that, we've got a couple of different uh, bitmap editing tools up here. We have the picture editor and we have the crop bitmap. And in order to use the crop bitmap, what I need to do is go back to my selection tool, select this circle, hold down my shift key and select this bitmap and go ahead and crop that. And you'll see what happens is it crops that bitmap down for me. That's pretty good. Now I want to make this a bit better because when obviously when you burn these, they're going to end up being black and wood color. So we want to kind of get a good impression of what these are actually going to look like in the finished uh, on the finished piece of wood, or at least get us to a point where we're going to be set up for a decent result. So um, we're going to have that selected. We'll go over to our picture editor. First thing we're going to do is convert it to a grayscale. Okay, that's more realistic to what we're going to see in our material. And then we're going to play around with our contrast a little bit and see if we can actually make the darks a little bit darker. And then we want to make the lights a little bit lighter. So if we use our gamma here, we can kind of mess around with this a little bit and get to a point where we're pretty happy with the way this is. I think that looks pretty good. It's going to be a bit dark here, but that's okay. But the rest of it should be okay. So let's just go ahead and hit apply on that and we'll close that down. Now we're going to do the same for each one of these bitmaps. Again, looking at each one individually because they were taken at different times in life maybe. So we're going to need to kind of keep things different things in mind but mainly what we want to do is remember the black areas are going to be really black and the light areas are going to be really light so we want something in the middle that's going to look pretty good so let me just go ahead and work through the rest of these bitmaps Okay, there we have it. Now let's take a look at these all together as a group. So hold down my shift key, I can select them all. 
Now you can see that probably mom is going to turn out probably the very best because she's on a white background and her face is pretty much the part that's going to get etched. Where with grandma and grandpa over here, we end up having this stuff in the background, which may end up not being the best um, image for this, but you know, you kind of got to go with what you got. And this is what I had. And this one here, what's nice about this is it's dark down here, but doesn't quite get light enough in the background where, so this one could also be a darker one out of all five of them. Um, but we'll see in the end how that goes. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to actually put in the names, the proper names. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll click on this. There we go. And we're just gonna go ahead and type these in. Okay, there we go. Those are all updated and so on. Now let's start to look at creating the tool paths for these. Now we'll select the first one here. This is uh, granddad and grandma. Now we can't multiple, we can't shift select these and do them all in one tool path. We have to do one at a time. So we're going to go ahead with this one, grandma and granddad. And now we have the option. If again, we have V transfer set up on our machine and we can use that, then we could do one, we could send it off to our machine come back, do the, generate the toolpath, use the same set, same toolpath, just a different bitmap, generate it, send it off to the machine, and so on and so forth. Or we could generate five individual toolpaths and save them off as a group if we wanted to. There's all kinds of things, you, all kinds of different ways you can cut these or burn these. So I'm going to do one at a time. So we're going to have five different toolpaths once we sort out the settings for one of these. We're just going to use the same settings. So let's go ahead and choose this picture. We're going to go over to our picture editor. We're going to go ahead and select the other laser option, which is the photo one. Again, the power is going to be at 15, move speed 45, and the maximum burn rate. This is what's going to help us 3D preview this better is 250. So we're going to select that. We have some quick settings here that we can go ahead and use if we want to, but I'm not going to touch those right now. We have different ways that we can etch this picture as a raster, as a hatch, which is just a raster one way and then raster the other way, so you get a hatch. And then we have selected vectors. So if we wanted to use a selection of vectors, we could use those. We have a great tutorial on how to do that sort of thing um, in our tutorial browser uh, to do with the um, vector texture. Um, so that might be a good op option for you to take a look at if you're interested in that one. We're not going to dither the image, um, but you could if you wanted to. That might help in the, in, in the resolution that you get or the way it's going to be presented. Okay, but right now we're going to use lines, not dots. Okay. Um, we have a choice to, we have an option to choose the line spacing, and this seemed to work really good for my pictures, which is 0.07 of an inch. Um, the line angle is going to be at zero, and... Um, we're not going to project this onto a 3D model because we don't need to because it's just going to be a flat piece of material. And let's go ahead and calculate that. And let's preview that visible tool path. And there you have it. Now again, I can modify that burn rate to either lighten or darken that depending on this, the test that I've done uh, ahead of time. Now, in my particular case, I couldn't, I didn't have a, um, a material, a representation of the material that was close enough to what I was burning into. So I had to keep that in mind when I was doing this. But this gives me, sorry, this gives me a decent idea of what I'm going to see. So that's great. So that's the first one. Let's close this down. Let's go back to our 3D view. Let's choose this one. Let's just go ahead and uh, laser that. It's going to remember all of our options, which is great. We just need to calculate that. That's great. Let's close that down. Yeah, I'll just work my way through the rest of these now because they're all exactly the same. Perfect. That's great. So now we have all five of our of our pictures there. We can go ahead and preview those if we want to and see what we end up with. And you can see in the end result here that these ones may end up being a bit dark. I could go back and fix this one right now. Um, and dad might be marginal, but definitely mom and Eddie are going to look really great in the end. So, you know, I'm okay with testing that or trying these settings out and see how it goes. So let's go ahead and close this down. The next thing we're going to want to do is our details. So let's move this cutout past to the bottom just so we don't get messed up. Go back here again. You'll see that our details are all these lines. So let's just double click on that. And this is set up with the cut and fill tool path. Okay, we're gonna just cut on the line. Now, I mentioned I'd come back to this in a second that when I actually cut these with the laser, or etched them with the laser, um, the line was quite thin. It wasn't quite dark enough. So what I opted to do was to actually run this tool path three times, but just choosing a different option. So I went on the outside, the inside, and I cut on the line. And that gave me a nice, bold line around everybody. So I was pretty happy with that. 
But I'm happy with the way this is right now to show you. So we'll calculate that. We'll preview that visible toolpath. That looks really good. Happy with that. Let's close that down. Let's go to our names. Go back over here again. You'll see the names because they're they're already associated with that tool path because we hadn't done anything funny to them. We can just go ahead and calculate that and we can preview that visible tool path. You'll see we get that really nicely done. And the last tool path to run is going to be the cutout pass, which is using a 1 8 inch end mill, the same end mill that we use to cut the pockets out on the top of the tree. Outside that line, we have tabs and calculate that and that's okay. And let's go ahead and preview that visible tool path. Now there you have it. That in the end should look okay. And we'll see how they they actually etch in the end on our final project. But I may need to come back and mess around with the grandparents here a bit um, just to kind of lighten them up enough. But uh, we'll see how that goes in the end. Anyway, let's go off to the machine and see how these do. So I haven't, as I said before, I haven't actually moved that part from the machine. So now all I need to do is apply the offset that I have and that will line up our laser focal point with where we started our actual cutting from, okay, our zero, zero. And then with the proper protection, we can go ahead and start lasering onto this ribbon. So let's get that done right away. So most, most of these lasers have a little bit of a, a gizmo that helps you um, set up the focal length for it. And this is the one for this particular laser. And as I mentioned earlier, what happens is that with our, with our laser module, we can actually control um, the Z height of the laser so it'll always stay in focus across the surface of a relief model. In this case, the top part of this ribbon. So as long as I set this right, then it'll always be consistent across the Z height. So let's do that now. We got our protection, eye protection on. We're gonna go ahead and turn the laser on now. So from here on out, we won't take off our goggles. Oh, it looks really good. I think it's gonna be really nice in the end. So we're just gonna move it out of the way now, pop it off, test fit it into our tree, and see how it looks. Okay, as I just saw, it's really cool when we actually can laser onto a 3D contour, like the top of this ribbon, which isn't flat. But now we're gonna go in and actually cut the tags of the family members. So we're gonna just do that on a flat piece of material that I already have stuck down to the CNC. But we're gonna do this slightly backwards though, before um, we would actually use the offset to, put to, to, to make sure we line up the laser properly with the 3D component. But in this case, we're gonna do the lasering first and then go ahead and cut out the part with the proper CNC router. So we're gonna do it slightly backwards, but it should work out just fine. So let's go ahead and start um, etching in the first picture, and then we'll do the pictures individually, and then we'll add some other details to that afterwards. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on at a very low power so that I can line up the laser with the corner of my material or my start point, because right now I can't tell where it is. So a bit of a learning thing, I had gone ahead and done my test burns in pine and so uh, they look different in this harder wood. So I'm really quite happy with the, uh, with the 
with Eddie and his mom and dad, but the grandparents came out a little bit dark. So I think what I might do is once we get these all cut out, I might consider going ahead and re-etching the uh, grandparents with the new settings that I used for Eddie and his mom and dad. Uh, but we'll decide that a bit later. So all the lasering is done, so we can remove the laser, put it aside for now. And now what I need to do is move the router in the negative offset so I can line up the cutter with the corner where I zeroed my laser from. So let's go ahead and do that next. So there we have it, the outline has been done, so they're cut out, they look really good, and using that offset made it so that everything was lined up perfectly. So the border around those, those laser etched pictures is just perfect, and they look really good. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them out of this piece of material, sand off the tabs, and we'll test fit them in the holes, make sure they fit okay. If they do, we'll glue it up, and we'll do a little finishing, and then we can uh, talk a little bit more after we're all done that. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. I think it's a really nice customizable project, a great use of the molding toolpath, and of course, the laser module that you can get for your software. Uh, the only thing I might change about this would be that uh, I would go ahead and re-etch grandma and grandpa on both sides of the family. They're a little bit dark, and I actually didn't glue those in place so I could replace them at a later date, so this looks a lot nicer in the end. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, this file is ready for you to download if you'd like to. Um, you can download that from your VNCO account. The link will be below. Also a link for the information about vTransfer if you're interested. Um, if you do like this video, how about you give us the thumbs up. Um, if you want to, please share it. Um, if you don't follow us socially, please do. If you're a member of the forum and you do cut this, we would love to see you post it there so that we can uh, see what you're doing with your laser module. Anyway, until next time, I hope that you have fun cutting and um, keep safe.